There have been so many changes since I got trapped in my house in this world that we live in. <laughs> yes, it's dark in here. It's very hot outside and this is what I do. I put a damp uh, <laughs> damp cloth over the windows. It helps. <clears throat> I'm used to living in the desert. We couldn't get a doctor online when I first got hurt like this. <clears throat> you couldn't get anybody to come to your house, period. When I was calling my doctor's office, they kept telling me I had to just go to the hospital, you know. They didn't believe me. I even had some of my friends that were hurt like me try to call them, and they made fun. They, they thought it was funny. They were amused. I wish I had it recorded. So there was no telehealth. There was no delivery here at all except for pizza, and it was terrible pizza. We couldn't get food delivered out here. And then when I was finally able to leave my house, the virus hit, you know? And everybody was acting like it was the end of the world. It was, it was pretty terrifying. Ah, very terrifying. <laughs> mm. I don't know, you know? <laughs> In just six years, it's like I don't recognize this planet anymore. I kept telling myself once I turned that corner and I got better that, you know, my family would be there. Everybody would see what really happened, you know, and, and they'd be here for me. But this, this was just because they didn't understand, right? There is help out there if, if you're brave enough. <laughs> I'm not willing to let them put any more of that poison in me. I cannot go back to acute. I will not survive that. So you can say I'm crazy all you want to, but I've never had much luck putting out a fire with gasoline. To me, taking those benzodiazepines would be the same, same thing.